Hello, Dr. Wasabi. Remember me? <sighs> I meet degenerate goth girls every day, honey. What makes you so special? <laughs> Fish with some of is cooking up trouble. Kung Fu chickens get there on the double. Chop, 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 while American Cartoon Network shows are a household name, most people I doubt recognize the foreign stuff that CN has produced outside of Gumball or maybe Powerpuff Girls Z. It's a whole nother world that American CN has mostly ignored. Like, you ever hear of AKA Cult Toon? It was essentially the origin of YouTube poop back in 1989, mixing Hanna-Barbera cartoons with random clips of 70s exploitation, wrestling, and celebrity interviews. It's very experimental. <laughs> But there was no meat to be found. Blast! Wouldn't you know it? No tea. Oh well, I'll mix up something that looks like tea from these test tubes. <laughs> Plus, it was hosted by an official black recolor of Dexter's lab of all things. Yo, 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 it's the main man of the house, Jackie Potato. And coming up, we're gonna get chop suey with Hong Kong fooey. Give it some gas with the wacky races. Pay a visit to Rio Ferdinand and Trevor Sinclair and book a ticket to Danger Island. But first, this. This is freaking real and just another product of Cartoon Network's many strange international productions. And the one I'm talking about today is 2007's Chop Saki Chooks. Sorry to pry this one out of your oppressed memories. Chop Saki is a CG cartoon produced by both Cartoon Network Europe with Ardman Animation known for Wallace and Gromit and created by one of their stop motion animators, Sergio Delfino. That's my favorite plaza. <laughs> This is a cartoon I absolutely admire the art of, and it was actually doing pretty well in ratings, yet even during its run, some people have considered ugly and possibly offensive, but is it really? We'll get into that. Cue the intro, it's Juice and Jam time. Chop Suey Chooks. <laughs> Chop Saki Chooks was yet another 2000s episodic action cartoon. It was about these three kung fu chickens who protect this dystopian city that's really one gigantic mall. Yes, the whole city is a mall, and these are in fact chickens, and not some sort of bowling pin humans or Roger from American Dad looking asses. Hey, did these characters look anything like the animals they represent? I don't think so. Maybe with their pinhead designs, this show can have a reboot via bowling alley screens. <laughs> Now, the name really raised a lot of questions. Chop Saki Chooks. Chop Saki refers to kung fu films, and Chooks, to a lot of people, sounds like a racial slur. But it's just Australian slang for chicken. It's not anything bad. The way I see it, this reminds me a lot of the 2003 party fighting game, Kung Fu Chaos. Lights! Camera! Action! <laughs> Many reviewers at its release, and even today consider that game racist. I already covered it in one of my favorite videos, but after I uploaded that, I found a good article about chaos. It cites how the game's publisher, Microsoft, showed the game to, quote, various ethnic groups to make sure they wouldn't find it offensive, and nobody did. It's making fun of kung fu movies, it's not really mocking Asians. At least I think it's not, I'm not Asian. Maybe Chop Saki is another Speedy Gonzalez situation where, in 1989, Cartoon Network refused to air his shorts when Mexicans actually really liked that character. Character. There's probably nothing offensive about Chop Saki Chooks. Like, look at this cast. You got Chick P, the Tom girl who doesn't put up with anyone's BS. There's K.O. Joe, this jive talking humanoid chicken that does not represent any particular race of humans. <laughs> Give it a dang cracker! <laughs> oh boy. 
And, and you got Sensei Chucky Chan, no relation, the book smart one who has two English voice actors. Yeah. In some countries like the US, we got an alternate dub where everything's the same except they got rid of his accent and made him fumble less phrases. Here's a comparison. Psychic uh? is probably the word for which you search. Psychic uh? is probably the word for which you seek. Ume, ume, ume. You would do well to remember that the turtle does not learn backstroke in the cornfield. Ume, ume, ume. You would do well to remember that the turtle does not learn the backstroke in the cornfield. Yeah, I wonder why they redubbed him. Apparently, it's unknown who replaced him. The credits for both versions are the exact same, so they're either uncredited or the same white guy redid the job. At least they corrected themselves. I wouldn't personally say the show's totally racist. More like questionable, like they generally didn't know and were willing to fix it. Plus, consider that it's the UK. They're not as sensitive, I don't think. They don't get as offended. Unless you call them a spat. Mistakes were made, like this scene where Chucky is learning English on tape deck. Excuse me, my spleen is ruptured. Please direct me to nearest optician. I thought that tape was saying the same phrase he's translating, but some of my fans on Twitter confirmed it's gibberish that vaguely sounds Chinese. <laughs> Okay, look, it's like saying blah blah blah, but with a specific language. I, I'm sure that's what they were thinking. They probably didn't know better. It's not like they pulled a Looney Tunes and made a buck tooth slanted eyed, round glasses wearing Asian character. And the entire population of Wasabi World is invited to rejoice! Look, it's fine, they made changes, they understand where they messed up. Let's not pull a James Gunn here. This series has other qualities than two scenes I pulled out of context. Mark my words, Chucky Chan. I will have my vengeance on you in this world or the next. Do not worry. They all say that. So how's the show itself? Well, this cartoon came out in the 2000s when everyone was kung fu fighting again. Maybe it was a combination of 70s nostalgia, DVDs making niche cult films cheaper, Jackie Chan's popularity, anime, The Matrix, Crouching Tiger, and other wire fu action. There was just so much kung fu media and especially cartoons. Like, who the hell watched skunk fu? Let me rephrase that. Who actually remembers skunk fu? The only notable thing about that series was Ghostface Killer of Wu Tang did the theme song. I'm serious. Yo, skunk fool, balancing the earths and the heavens with an old wise panda and a whole pack of regions. Rabbit, fox, pig, snake, and killer bees. Conceptually, Chop Saki Chooks doesn't really stand out from the other kung fu action comedies, and character wise, they leave a bad first impression. Too many early episodes don't give the Chooks enough time with their daily lives working day jobs. They're too quick to jump into the action, and you really don't get a strong feel for their characters, like K.O. Joe. Who exactly is K.O. outside his hero work? He's an ass. Asshole. Though after a few episodes, they realize it's best to write that into the plot. I like seeing these possibly college-age characters having different jobs, coming together during break to just watch TV or go out to drink some tea. Chop Saki definitely needed a few episodes before it got its footing, like with episode 6, If Looks Could Kill. This is where the girl Chick P reunites with her childhood friend Oni, who turns evil and looks like my little sis. <laughs> Here, it feels like they knew how to balance the character growth with the comedy. With Oni's mind control powers, she now refers to herself as Deadeye. I thought she was a good character and was hoping she'd return to further develop the plot. But in the show's 26 episode run, this character only appeared... once. Before we left, Oni and I promised to stay friends forever. I made a wish that someday we'd be together again. So? Did you stay in touch or what? Chop Saki Chooks is a fun show, yet I do appreciate them trying to ease into some more serious villains and storylines. It doesn't fully go for it, nor does it have to, but part of me wishes they did more. Like if we're comparing these chickens to turtles, it's the 80s TMNT. Yet I could see a more serialized reboot working for these characters. I love the main villain, Dr. Wasabi, this piranha apparently. I thought it was a literal piece of wasabi or a citizen of the Bean Bean Kingdom, but no. 
With his gorilla bodyguard, Bubba, they control the mall and all its media. Pretty interesting to have a bad guy who already rules the world. Regarding their height difference, they really remind me of the villains from Robot Boy. The two big guys even share the same voice actor, Rupert Degas. Now, like I said before, the art style is something I'm glad I can gush about and I'm sure others would agree, yet I've seen people who look down upon these designs. To that, I will greatly disagree. <laughs> To me, this is one of the most stylish TV animations ever. It really holds up way better than other CG cartoons from the era like Tack or Barnyard. Plus, it was inspired by the rise of urban vinyl figures. During the 2000s, the art of designer toys was really taking off. It was that niche time before Funko Pops took over when mainstream audiences weren't exactly aware of vinyl, but industry artists were. You had all these Cartoon Network nude era bumpers, there was this British puppet show called Strange Hill High, the PS3 game Mod Nation Racers featured designs from the co-creator of the Nutshack, I'm not kidding. It may not be for everyone, but Chop Saki has style. Oh. oh, sure it's fun now until someone loses an eye. <laughs> Its toy influence really defines its look. There's a real flow to everyone. I would so want figurines of these chooks or even the background characters. It's as if they forced 2D doodles into 3D. Reminds me of what Book of Life did years later, but would I say these characters are ugly? They're unconventional, like Duckman. Not every character has to be bangable to be well designed. Hey, did you just whistle at me? Don't flatter yourself. They're not so bad when you see how weird they were as babies, trust me. As for the environments, having this towering neon mall location is such a fun setting. It's basically a city, but it's so big that there's essentially tribal people living in a far off section of it. Like what else is in here? A whale's vagina. Animation wise, it's fine, but sometimes the punches lack a sense of oomph to the action. Like there's no way to it. Again, TV CG in the 2000s wasn't exactly the best. Also again, much like the writing, the animation seems to improve over time. I really wonder where the show could have been had it gone on longer. But this reminds me, I actually emailed an artist who designed the characters and setting, Danny Capozzi, who also wishes there was more Oni and even sent me some old concept art of her. I'm feeding her to you on a platter here, man. She's mean and she's a goth. Don't judge me. Before I read their email and find out why these chooks don't look like chickens, we'll be back after these messages. Jopsaki Chooks is coming up next. Manscaped, back at it again, it's, yep, Manscaped. You wanna shave your Lawn Mower 3.0. It's not for your face, it's for anywhere below your neck. It's TSA friendly. You'd wish the TSA would cuff your clean shaven balls for carrying this around. Get 20% off plus free shipping and two free gifts with the code TAXI20 at manscaped.com. And look at this, it's got a light in case you're spelunking on the moon and want to shave. It's perfect for where the sun don't shine. I'm too afraid to look at my own reflection in the mirror, so this is perfect for me. And don't worry about cuts, it's skin safe technology. No nicks, no snags guaranteed. Plus the 3.0 is backwards compatible, meaning you can use the 2.0's replaceable ceramic trimmer blade, and vice versa. PS4 ain't backwards compatible, but this is. Once again, get 20% off plus free shipping and two free gifts with the code TAXI20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you, and so will I. Manscaped also works for female sexes too. So I love how some of these guys are sitting alone and maybe without food. Half of them look like they got their legs blown off in Nam. It's like a waiting room in the afterlife. Anyway, the designer's email. Daniel tells me how the characters were first designed for a 2D style inspired by graphic nightclub flyers. The chooks were gonna have beaks, but he felt that wouldn't be as unique. Now earlier I thought only America got the altered English dub for Chucky Chan, but according to him, halfway through the series they had to change Chucky's voice for everyone since they got several concerns. It was never meant to offend and they just wanted to pay tribute to the martial arts stars they grew up with. Surprisingly, Chop Saki's viewership had good ratings and was steadily rising. It was looking to be Cartoon Network's next big action franchise, but the channel got a hold of another show. Star Wars. La Guerra de los Clones. 
Once they got Star Wars on their channel, Chop Saki wasn't as important. Yep, put that in the memorial wall of projects abandoned thanks to Star Wars. There's only room in this schedule for one questionably racist franchise around here. It was looking bad, and with all those other kung fu cartoons coming out, Chop Saki Chooks just wasn't looking so original. So, 26 episodes is all it got. Going back to Danny's email, he concludes with... We all broke our backs to create this show. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and really put our all into making it happen. We were all truly gutted it didn't go further, but we all had a lot of fun working on it. All the best, Danny Capozzi. Sayonara, Sensei. Cobra! <laughs> Chop Saki Chooks is a fun show that dips its toes into more ambitious stories, yet never really commits to it. What you're left with is a stylish kung fu tribute, and I guess that's enough for its short run. But part of me wishes it could get another chance, like with all the Ben 10 continuations. Maybe with more story focus and today's higher standard of CG. It could make for some wild 3D action scenes. Don't know if it'll ever happen, but I want it. Chop Suey Chooks gets such a bad rep and deserves a second chance. Will somebody please? He stops us, Chop Sucking Chucks! Why does he keep calling us that? Chop Sucking Chucks! Are we these Chucks they speak of? Sounds good to me! Martin! Yo, 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 it's me, Jackie P, in the place to be. And I'm gonna run down tonight's Atlanta for y'all. At 7, it's Tom and Jerry. At 7.30, it's Looney Tunes. At 8, it's Dexter's Lab. I am fed up with it! At 8.30, it's Freakazoid. It's all happening tonight on AKA Cartoon Network. You dig? New Dexter's Laboratory Gogurt tubes actually change color when you touch them.